Welcome back. We're going to do um, 2 Nephi chapter 3. They're all here. It kind of looks weird, but they're right here. Um, <laughs> Lehi already talked to Jacob in chapter 2. Now he's talking to Joseph. And as he's talking to Joseph, at the very end, he talks about Joseph being young. And I love that Lehi didn't dumb this down. He really kept it exactly it was written from Joseph, who was um, sold into Egypt. So this is 95% the writings of Joseph, who was sold in Egypt, who kept a record. And now Lehi, who learns he's one of his descendants from those plates that the boys brought back from, brought back from Jerusalem, is now telling Joseph about this choice. Syria will be raised up, and his name will be named Joseph. and um, Or he will be named Joseph. Joseph Smith, right? He talks about the Book of Mormon and the Bible working together. And um, as I read this, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Joseph, really incredible. And that's when I thought, this was all written down by Joseph. I, I don't, I read through the Bible several times and I, the clarity, the um, pureness of it, the simplicity of it, what a blessing Lehi has this record and that he could tell that to his son. So I started noticing and I only marked one because they were all over talking about this being Joseph. Joseph truly testified saying, Joseph truly said, um, uh, thus prophesied Joseph saying, uh, thus prophesied Joseph and the word of the Lord was unto me also. He talked, Joseph is writing this. He's saying, this is what Joseph said. This is what Joseph said. This is what the Lord told Joseph to say. So the principle, I've got my P marked down right here. I've got this underlined principle at top. The part that I really wanted to analyze was, and this is the part that's underlined, Joseph truly testified saying. The principle that I had written up top, which might be a little hard to swallow for some of us, is keep a record. We need to be a record-keeping people. From the very beginning, the Lord's asked us. Um, at the very beginning of the Book of Mormon, Nephi talks about this. In chapter 1, verse 1, that's one of our references. Let's just go through them. First Nephi chapter 1, verses 1 and verses 3, Joseph talks about keeping a record. Um, Abraham chapter 1, verse 31, I kept a record. Hopefully, so he can bless his children, he says. Um, Doctrine and Covenant 62, 3, it talks about when we bear our testimonies, the angels write it down in heaven. And what happens because of that? Our sins are forgiven. The power of recording things is just, boom, mind-boggling. Um, let's do Moses 6, chapter, chapter 6, verses 5 through 6, and I'm going to jump to that one, actually, because it's, it's incredible. There's a wonderful promise when it comes to our writing. And the book of remembrance was kept, in the which was recorded, in the language of Adam, that's who started this out, Adam, for it was given unto as many as called upon God to write by the spirit of inspiration. So as many people call upon God can write with inspiration. How wonderful and amazing would that be for us to write inspired writings for our children, for our grandchildren, for our families, for our husbands, for our wives, for our sisters, our brothers, for anybody in our posterity, in our family unit. If we can write now, praying to the Lord and saying, you know, I really want to keep a journal and I know I've been commanded to, and he will inspire us and give us inspiration as to what to write will be the bless, biggest blessing for our children. Wow, what a promise to keep a journal and call on the Lord as we do so. We'll be able to help our children even long after we're gone. Our great-grandchildren, all of them, because we are keeping a journal and we've been told to from the beginning to keep journal. That's exactly what this example of keeping journals is all over. Um, Ezra chapter 2 verses 62 um, Ezra chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, and that is where I wanted to focus our time. Ezra is, the Jews who are on Babylon are coming back because the Lord has moved upon Cyrus. He's the king of Persia, and um, they're going to bring him back. And as he's going to bring them back, Cyrus says to give everything to them that came from the house of the Lord. When we took everything, give it all back to them. They're going. So all the Jews are coming together. They're like, this is incredible. Incredible. This is beyond incredible. We're going back. And not only that, he wants us to build our temple up again. Hallelujah. There's this wonderful scripture. And it talks about by the rivers of Babylon they wept. Or we wept. They, they're crying in Babylon because they can't get to Jerusalem. They can't get to the temple. So 
they're finally leaving Babylon. They're getting out of there. And as everybody starts to get all ready, the children of the priests come forth, or some of the children, not all of them. And this is one of the consequences of not keeping a record. And this consequence is just horrific. It's hard for me to stomach. But um, 61. So, and the children of the priests are coming forward. Verse 62. Um, These sought their register among those who were reckoned by genealogy. So they're coming to see. I'm, this is my lineage. I'm ready to serve as one of the sons of the priest. I know my role. I'm supposed to be a priest in this temple that we're going to rebuild. But they were not found in the books they're not in the records no what's gonna happen wherefore they were they as polluted put from the priesthood they're excluded from qualifying for the priesthood because they don't have the genealogy they don't have the records kept that's horrible that's so i mean talk about completely shattered right so that's the consequence of not keeping a record. In chapter 6, we learn about the, the blessings of keeping a record. When the Jews come in, they start building the Samaritans who are there. This is where the whole conflict from the Jews and the Samaritans kick up. Remember that story of the Good Samaritan? And um, so as there, this conflict begins because the Samaritans are like, what are you doing? You're building a wall. You're building this up. This is our land. What's going on? Well, let's ride to Persia. So they ride to Persia. Oh, no, new king. New king by the name of Darius. And this king is like, what's the issue? Let's check the records. Let's see what Cyrus wrote. Hallelujah, Cyrus kept a record, right? Um, there was found a roll, verse 2. And therein was a record, was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded. So, and he goes on to this wonderful <coughs> oh, proclamation that he's been written or decree so at the very end after Darius reads this he goes back to the Samaritans verse 7 and he says let the work of this house of God alone stop trying to fight him stop trying to kill him stop trying to hinder the work this has been decreed and it's been written and we're sticking to it let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place let them do it okay we're done fighting about it. So when I think about the importance of keeping a record, the ability that it is for us to not only see our family lineage, which was catastrophic in the case of those priests, um, but knowing that as we keep a record, the Lord will inspire us to write things that will save our posterity, that will give them the courage to keep going. Um, President Spencer W. Kimmel gave a wonderful talk um, years ago, it was like in the 80s, about keeping journals. And the only reason I know this is because I've given one too many talks about keeping a journal. Anyway, so should probably learn from that. But um, no, I, I do. I try to keep a good journal. But um, he talks about don't paint your life in these rosy colored glasses, right? Don't, don't make your life look better than it is. Be real because the problems you're facing, the interactions with others, the tribulations, the struggles, the shortcomings, they will be very similar to what our children and our grandchildren and our posterity go through. So paint life realistically and help them to learn. Learn from your mistakes. Help them to gain stronger testimony. Focus right by the spirit of inspiration so our children can know what source to look, right? We know that scripture. I mean, it's all about the records. So I wanted to end on this quote from President Kimball, and it's from that same talk. He says, I promise you that if you will keep your journals and records, they will indeed be a source of great inspiration to your families, to your children, your grandchildren, and others on through the generations. We need to keep records. We are a record-keeping people. And we need to seek that inspiration and trust that the Lord is inspiring us to write. Those things will be of greatest benefit to our children and our children's children. And I know that is true, and I pray we'll do better with that. Yeah, me especially, right? Um, and I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.